Do you like escape rooms? Are you interested in game making? Ludum Dari, the 48 hour game jam event just wrapped up and I made a virtual escape room. Today, we're gonna recap the journey to making this game in just 48 hours. Let's do it. The theme of Ludum Dari 52 was harvest. The first two hours of the jam weren't done in front of a computer. Instead, my wife and I got together at the dinner table and designed the room out with a big pile of index cards and some colored pens. We discussed and brainstormed all the different ideas for using harvest as a concept and came up with the idea of a fall harvest festival. Organized here, you can kind of see all the different puzzles we designed on note cards. You can see the puzzles organized here into four different columns, each corresponding to one of the four different rooms that are going to be part of the escape room experience. On the left is the welcome lobby with the first puzzle. The second column has the two puzzles that are in the second room, which I like to nickname the apple room since it has the bobbing for apples puzzle and the apple cider puzzles. The third column has three puzzles, which is the beanbag toss, scarecrows, and the crows. And the fourth column has the corn maze and sunflowers puzzle sketch. Looking back, it's kind of crazy to me that the final game actually remained fairly faithful to this initial design. That's not common in most real life design, and certainly not in game jams. More often than not, the design has to be changed based on development and playtesting, but I really lucked out on this one. The next step was to do quick level design layout. For this, I use the ever powerful tool, Google Slides. And here's a side by side of the Google sketch and a top down view of the final game. Not too shabby. The main differences in actual implementation were the bean bag toss and the corn maze. More on both of these later. Here's a quick model of the first room made in Blender. The room was able to import seamlessly into Unity, which is pretty fantastic. Getting the basic proportions of a room in place is called a gray box test. Gray box testing is an important first step when designing levels to give you a sense of proportion and flow. Does the height of the ceiling feel good? How about the size of the windows? If we know how fast the player moves, is the room a good size for the pace of the game? With the first room in place, the next step is to write a basic player controller. A player controller is when you can take the inputs from the keyboard and the mouse and use it to navigate and control the player through the game world. We're going to go with standard WASD controls and looking around with the mouse. A simple player controller script can interpret the axes from the Unity input system and move the player around. So let's talk about the implementation of the puzzles themselves. The first puzzle is the three buttons that correspond to the three leaves on the welcome sign. To start making this puzzle, let's first put a temporary sign on the wall of the room. You'll note that the art for the three leaves isn't on the sign yet. This is because we haven't drawn the leaves yet. We're just getting the sign in place in preparation for the leaves puzzle later. We want to put a temporary sign up as part of the gray box process. We want to know that the sign feels comfortable, that the size of the sign is good, and that it's going to work well within the room. It's time to make the leaf buttons. The leaf buttons are made using simple cubes with a texture drawn onto them. Each state of the button is going to be represented with a separate game object. For the purposes of this game jam, we're going to go ahead and swap entire game objects out rather than swapping just the texture because I want to be able to reuse the code and game logic for all of the puzzles. Rather than writing separate code to handle textures, letters, numbers, object rotations for different puzzles, we're just going to write one piece of code that swaps out different sub objects, which will be a really quick way for us to have the code ready for all the different puzzles in the jam. Once we have three buttons in place that can handle all the different leaf textures, it's time to put the solution up on the sign. And then to finish things off, we'll create the logic to detect when the player has solved the puzzle. I decided to use Unity's visual scripting system to handle the scripting logic for this jam. I'll be honest, I don't love the Unity visual scripting. It has some shortcomings. I really wanna like it more, but the functionality just isn't there yet. But that can be the topic for another day. For now, let's talk about what the Unity visual scripting system does well. The visual scripting system has two features in particular that will be particularly good for writing the logic for our escape room. First, Unity visual scripting is great when you want to reference lots of different objects in a scene. When you're coding logic like this in C-sharp, you would need lots of different references to different game objects. 
after writing these references, you then have to go into the editor and drag all the references into the inspector. You very quickly end up with an unwieldy number of references and it gets pretty messy. Another thing that visual scripting does really well is handling time delays and sequencing things. Anytime you wanna sequence different game logic events over time, Unity's visual scripting handles this pretty well. For the escape room game, we want to be able to detect the solution, but wait one and a half seconds for the player to not touch any of the inputs before declaring the solution valid. Because the player might just be clicking through a bunch of different states and have hit the solution by accident. For all the puzzles, we assign a number to each state. They can be numbered starting at zero since Unity and C-sharp always start counting things at zero. We assign a number to each of our leaf images. And in this case, we know that the solution to the puzzle is one, four, two. We have some visual scripting logic to check if the leaf buttons are in those states. And if so, we wait two seconds and check the state of the buttons again. If it's still one, four, or two, then we open the door. One of my game jam tips is to always try to have a first playable about 25% into the jam. This was one of my tips in the video five game jamming tips, link in the description if you wanna check that video out. So 25% into the jam, which is about the end of the first night, we now have a first playable of the game. It's the first room with the first puzzle. Awesome. Let me show you how the techniques of the leaf puzzle can be applied to a very different puzzle to highlight how the same concepts can be used to implement a very different kind of puzzle. In the case of the apple cider puzzle, the player has to set levers into different positions. Once again, each lever is set up as four different sub-objects. While we're in edit mode, you can see all four of the sub-objects just sit on top of each other, so it looks like a bit of a fan. But when the game is running, three of the lever positions are turned off and only one lever sub object is enabled at a time. Here's what it looks like while the game is running. You can see cider lever zero, cider lever one, lever two, and cider lever number three. Each time the player clicks, the lever that's currently being shown is disabled and the next one is enabled. Once again, we can use visual scripting to set up some logic that detects when the lever is in the correct position. You can see in the script that when the first lever is in the correct position, it begins evaluating to true. When all five levers are in their correct positions, the door opens. <laughs> Careful that you don't step out and fall to your death. Some final polish was added later to these levers to have a sound play when the player clicks on them. This is done using an audio source and a simple sound randomizer class, which randomly plays one of the assigned sounds every time the object is interacted with. A similar process used to make the leaf button puzzle and the apple cider levers has also been used to make all the other puzzles. Over the course of the 48 hour jam, each of the note cards that had been brainstormed at the start of the jam got turned into a puzzle that could be played. I wanna highlight an interesting design detail I encountered while working on the game. Looking at the pumpkin puzzle, here's how the room initially looked, which matches the sketch I had done in Google Slides. As soon as the player enters this room, there is this interesting looking pumpkin directly in front of you. Well, naturally the player is gonna be drawn to it. This meant that players would see the pumpkin and interact with the pumpkin before they saw the buttons associated with the puzzle. Unfortunately, this is backwards. What we want is for the player to see the buttons first, not know what to do with them, then see the pumpkins, knock out the teeth, and then have an aha moment where they make the connection back to the buttons they previously saw. This is one of the things players really love about escape rooms is being able to feel smart for having pieced two pieces of information together. I was actually stuck on this problem for quite a while, but I was convinced that the player seeing the pumpkin first and then knocking the teeth out before ever seeing the buttons was a significant problem. I happened to be streaming my game jam at the time on Twitch. Lopar Panda made this amazing suggestion to simply raise a half wall in the middle of the room. Then, instead of putting the 10 buttons for the pumpkin puzzle on the side wall, those buttons could be placed on this center raised wall. And so, off we go, back to Blender. We raise a wall section in the middle of the room, and after raising it, we export it back out to Unity, and here's what it looks like in the game now. Instead of coming in and seeing the pumpkin, you now see the 10 buttons. Speaking of the pumpkin's teeth, this was the most behemoth visual scripting since there are 10 different inputs to check. 
It all gets checked in the script machine just like all the other puzzles, with the results ending together in a huge chain to spit out true if the player has solved the puzzle and false if they haven't. And now we come to the end of the game, the player will take on the corn maze. I deliberately did not make the corn maze very complicated, for two reasons. First, I wanted to try and retain the feel that this was a digital version of a real-life escape room. A super complicated maze would not be realistic for a real-life escape room. Second, I knew that there was going to be a puzzle that involved going back and forth through the maze multiple times. This would underscore that you don't want the maze to be too complicated. For the final solution word of the corn maze puzzle, I actually ran the letters of the word corn maze through an online tool to try and find all the possible words that you could spell with the letters. I came back to the one my wife had initially suggested at the very beginning, moon. I picked cyan, white, and orange as the three primary colors that would be part of the solution because I knew that these three colors are relatively friendly for people with color blindness. That's not to say that this puzzle can be solved by anybody who is colorblind, that would be beyond the scope of this jam, but I at least wanted to maximize the chances that someone would be able to solve it. If you want to dig deeper into the details of this jam, I'll leave a link to the full Unity source files in the description below. Or you can post a comment with what you want to know more about and I'll follow up. If you're interested in joining in live to see an entire jam from start to finish, find me at twitch.tv slash if you're new here and enjoyed seeing this content and would like to see more like it, subscribe for more game design and game jamming content. Making games is hard, but you can do it with some time and a willingness to learn. Happy game making.